Good evening and welcome to the new season of Movie Drone. Among the diverse delights we have for you this year are such cult gems as Kiss Me Deadly, <laughs> The Harder They Come, Ooh, and Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. <laughs> Excursions into horror with Halloween. Killed him. You can't kill the boogeyman. And the people under the stairs. We have a generous helping of film noir. And a pair of demented biker movies. To begin the celebrations, a science fiction double bill, starting with The Andromeda Strain, a thriller based on a novel by Michael Crichton, the first such thriller, I think. It was made in 1970 in Cinemascope. This was the era of great experimentation in American film styles, and Andromeda Strain reflects this overtly in its use of split-screen sequences, as per The Boston Strangler and The Thomas Crown Affair. Tonight, you'll see Andromeda Strain in its original cinemascope form. I was afraid of that. The birds will eat the infected flesh and then fly off and spread the disease. If it is a disease. The three Michael Crichton films that I'm familiar with are Westworld, Jurassic Park, and this one. And they all seem to have the same basic theme. In each film, man creates a high-tech, electronic and mechanical paradise which invariably goes haywire and turns on its customers and creators. The Frankenstein story applied to theme parks and government installations. In the Andromeda strain, an American satellite returns to Earth with a deadly organism from outer space, a life form which kills almost all humans on contact. While the scientists urge nuclear destruction of the affected area, and politicians weigh up the likely consequences of incinerating select portions of the USA, a team of ace biologists and surgeons struggle to isolate the alien bacteria and find a cure. Whatever killed them in Piedmont is still there and still as potent as ever. If potent's the word. Let's try a rhesus. So, okay. Isolate and identify. All right. What's really interesting about this movie is its matter-of-factness. There are no movie stars, no love interest, no action until almost the very end. There's no music for the first hour of the film. The dialogue is often mundane and trivial, like the dialogue in that science fiction masterpiece, 2001, which is just as it should be, since the events in question, encounters with alien life, the possible annihilation of the human species, are so momentous. Ratchet it up just a notch, these could be Kubrick scientists with their animal experiments, their top secret government assignments, and their obsessive cleanliness. We face quite a problem. How to disinfect the human body, one of the dirtiest things in the known universe. That is, without killing the human being at the same time. It gets tougher as we go, I'm afraid. Hard on the taxpayers, isn't it, the way we burn up uniforms? They're paper. Perhaps not surprisingly, special photographic effects are by Douglas Trumbull, who did the special effects on 2001, and later directed his own science fiction film, Silent Running. For my money, this is the best of these Crichton science fiction thrillers. There's a nice layer of irony, not quite of Kubrickian proportions, but much more than would be acceptable in a mainstream Hollywood film today. The Andromeda Strain was more than competently directed by Robert Wise, who is very good with individual scenes, but lets the movie as a whole run on too long. Wise was the editor of Citizen Kane and The Magnificent Ambersons, and the director of many studio epics, including Sound of Music and Star Trek, and weirder small-scale films like Curse of the Cat People and Day the Earth Stood Still. The Andromeda Strain is unique in one particular way. It manages to pull off a third act of running, jumping, hiding, chasing, shooting laser gun scenes, which are actually interesting. Now, this is very rare. 
Normally, modern science fiction films follow the pattern of they live, which after a tremendous opening degenerates into endless shots of people running and chasing down corridors, firing off laser guns, like an old episode of Doctor Who without the Daleks. The Andromeda Strain actually manages to have such a finale and to make it exciting, as one of the scientists crawls around a nuclear bomb while being blasted by robot-directed laser beams and sprayed with poison gas. It's a splendid finale. How, by the way, do you know in a movie whether the plane is going to explode or not? The answer is contained tonight in the form of product placement. Product placement is a form of backsheesh whereby the film's producers or the studio agree to have the actors use a certain brand of deodorant or drink a certain type of canned beverage or fly a certain carrier's planes. In return for the free advertising, the film receives free beer or plane tickets or a certain brand of sweetener is added to somebody's Swiss bank account. Hence, if tonight the hero is traveling aboard a certain actual existing airline, relax. No airline is going to lend its logo to a movie if the plane then gets blown up any more than a whiskey company is going to give free bottles to a production in which the hero dies of drink. So, from now on, if you see Warren Beatty getting aboard a plane bearing an obviously fake airline logo such as American Transair, be on your guard. At very least, there's going to be a mid-air collision and Warren is going to have to wrestle the old Airbus in for an emergency landing on the M6.